Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. I'm Tim, and it is a beautiful day here in West Tennessee. I see the sun is shining, and everything is green. How are you all doing this morning? Good morning, Gary Ball. Hope you're doing well this morning. Said he can't make it. He's got church down during this time, but he stopped in just to say, hey, K62, good morning, sister. Hope you're doing well. Auntie Ann. Auntie Ann says the power went out, and she just got it back. Good to have you in here, Miss Auntie Ann. Hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. I uh, see. Uh, there you go, Auntie Ann, K62. We got two people in here. Hopefully I am live. Normally I see people start to roll in. Uh, guys, it has been a rough, rough weekend. It is beautiful outside, but it is rough here on the ridge. Uh, let's see if uh, Auntie Ann says my uh, sound and video is loud and clear. She's my moderator. And she checks up on me. There you go, right there, loud and clear. Thank you, Miss Auntie Ann. I'm glad you got your power back and you are here to join us. Got my coffee this morning, guys. Again, it has been a painful, painful weekend. Rough weekend, rough weekend here on the Ridge. Um, most of you know, I'm, uh, finishing my first week after a major knee surgery, had, a uh, ACL reconstruction with allograft and, uh, meniscus, lateral meniscus repair. And, uh, that knee is uh, a 53 year old knee, uh, does not heal as quickly as a, tw a 35 year old knee. Um, and, but I'm healing. I I've been doing PT, uh, in Collierville, Tennessee. I've done that three times, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My surgery was Friday after last. And um, but yeah, the 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 physical therapist saying I am I am I am speeding along in my recovery. Uh, my muscles are are doing what they're supposed to do, my flexibility, uh, my pain tolerance. Um, the issue is I see where I, I usually take my um, my uh, painkiller right before I do my PT. And uh, it's been a little over a week, and I have like three left. And I've got many, 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 many weeks left of uh, rehabilitation. So I've been kind of holding off on the painkillers, and uh, Tylenol just don't cut it. Tylenol just don't cut it. The knee is a little sore. Irene Turner, good morning. Glad to have you in here this morning, sister. Appreciate you. We are going to talk about God's perfect timing. It sure is. God's perfect time. I'm going to give you nine amazing reasons why it's perfect. Okay. Will they refill the script? I don't think so. It's, you know, it's the, it's the uh, oxy stuff they don't want people to have. Right. So uh, I'm just going to um, uh, just do Tylenol and, and uh, you know, and, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It is tough though. It is tough. But yes, guys, we are going to uh, uh, get into God's perfect timing. Why is God's timing perfect? Most of us don't think it is. Most of us think God messes things up. And when, I say, when I say most of us, I'm saying the world, okay? Because a lot of the world believes in God, but doesn't really follow God. So they usually like blame God a lot of times for their, their timing issues, right? Uh, Christians know that we're here just for a season. And God's got things planned out, and sometimes we we take detours, but God's timing is perfect. It really is. And uh, I'm going to give you nine reasons his timing is amazing, amazing. Uh, Lynn, the Oki's in here. Good morning. Jeannie Lipsky, thanks for coming in. I appreciate you so, so much. Got six people in here. A good morning, a good morning. We just started these lessons from the Ridge back up. Uh, this is what the, the second or the third I've done. And um, uh, had some uh, a long break. Um, now that I'm recuperating back home and can't go to church, why not uh, do some Bible study of my own and uh, have church with you all here live on Ridge Life on on Ridge on Lessons from the Ridge Ridge Life Lessons? Uh, because he has a plan, says Auntie Ann. You got that right, sister. Landyoki, maybe after PT, take um, Epsom salts. Oh man! So as you take some pain medicine. I do my PT and then I uh, I sit down real good and 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 do all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hot showers, you know, all, all that good stuff. Uh, hot showers, 
uh, kind of loosen me up, but the cold really prevents the swelling and uh, really makes it cool. Um, it is, I'm also doing my own PT here at home. So I, I do it three times a day, every day, but three times a week, it's at the physical therapy. They give me uh, home exercises and I got to do pretty much the same stuff at home. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sticking with it, guys. I am sticking with it. I am doing it to the letter. I want to get back at it and building the barn and building the barn dominium and just going forward with the beautiful life that God's given me. And I'm going to make sure that uh, I can do it to my fullest potential. OK, so uh, I'm going to do everything he says and taking a lot of you guys uh, recommendations as well. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. We got eight people in here. We're about five minutes in. And I hope you're uh, ready for a good little lesson on God's timing. A lot of us understand it, but um, there's, a little, it's a, there's a little deeper stuff going on. And uh, hopefully I'm going to give you some things today to reflect on why you understand God's timing is perfect. OK. Now, um, like a Bible study, like a little uh, life group, uh, if you have any um, prayer requests, like for Tim's knee, <laughs> for quick he quick and uh, healing, um, please uh, add it in. The moderators will take note of it. Uh, they'll pray for you. I'll pray for you later when I read it. If I miss it uh, during the during the live today, but uh, you have the ability here to uh, reach a lot of people. I know there's only seven people in here right now. But we've had thousands of people watch these lessons from the Ridge uh, uh, later on. If they if they see your your need and can pray for you, uh, that's just another voice lifted up to the heavens uh, to help you out. Okay, so uh, please, if you have any kind of prayer prayer request, please um, 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 l l put it out here. Uh, be as specific as you want, or be as generic as you want. Uh, God knows your God God knows your need. Okay, understanding and being happy with it are sometimes not the same, says Auntie Anne. You got that right, sister. Uh, Lynn Yoki says, I have uh, seven transactions trans, transactions of the Bible. Probably translations. Probably translations. Uh, maybe after PT. Oh, yeah, I read that already. Okay. So, guys, let's get into it today. Uh, God's timing is perfect. Perfect. Now, if you're a Christian, chances are you've heard this phrase in, in, in our church sermon. I'm almost certain you had that God's timing is perfect. It makes sense, right? God's timing is perfect because he is God. However, there are seven reasons why God knows what is best for us and why our own timing can be wrong. We have deadlines. We have obligations. Uh, it's a narrow perspective compared to his perspective. Let's face it. We're impatient, right? We're impatient. God doesn't struggle with any of these things. In fact, his schedule and his timing aren't dependent on our schedule. His guidance uh, in our life might come late for what we want or expect. Most often it does, right? But his timing is perfect nonetheless. Karen Brest, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you coming in this morning. Um, we have seven in here now. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I appreciate y'all coming back to Ridge Life Lessons. It's been a while. Been a while, but um, the fact that I'm at home in the bed here, convalescing in Grandma Carol's cabin. I'm not in the Ridge crib. Uh, convalescing in Grandma Carol's cabin. She's been taking care of me. Um, and um, this is just the season I'm in right now. This is just the season I'm in. And uh, there's a reason for it. And uh, I will find that reason, use it, and move ahead and upward. Promise you. Promise you. God doesn't struggle with any of these things, okay, with our timing and our schedules and all that. In fact, his schedule and his timing isn't dependent on our schedule at all. Don't let this simple phrase today, guys, that God's timing is perfect fool you, okay? God's timing doesn't mean that your timing is worthless, nor does it mean there's no reason to respect time and schedule. Remember, he, he told us to be, 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 be diligent with that, right? It simply means that God knows all things and they occur in his perfect time, not ours. We still need to work hard and focus on improving our faith. That's really what it comes down to. When you want to understand God's timing, understand your faith, strengthen your faith, get closer to your faith. His timing will make more sense to you. 
Okay, let's look. Let's take a little closer look at this common phrase of God's timing is perfect. I've been wondering the meaning of the tattoos on Tim's arm. These are all nautical. Um, just have uh, I do have a Ridge Life thing right here, and uh, yeah, so th everything on me is nautical. I was in the Navy. Navy sailors get a lot of tattoos. So uh, yeah, just just all nautical except for the one Ridge Life. You know. Um, God's timing is always perfect for us. Okay, guys? It's always perfect for us. If we look at that phrase from our perspective, God's timing may not always seem perfect. And it's important to understand that his timing, again, isn't our timing. Now, with this in mind, it doesn't mean we shouldn't accept or deny a job offer. And it certainly doesn't mean we should refuse an engagement proposal because God hasn't given us a definitive answer. No, that's not how it works. God's timing is the result of our prayers, our consultations, and our knowledge of Scripture. His guidance appears through a variety of sources. And we're going to get into those today, okay? Cindy Ellis, good morning. I appreciate you coming in today. We're going to have a good time, I promise you, looking at God's timing and why it's right for us, okay? Why it's right for us. Anyone's came in this morning I didn't say hello to? Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Lessons from the Ridge. God's answers also come through his teachings and his scriptures. And, and, and they, they, they appear through church leadership as well. Not just his teachings in the Bible, through church leaderships, okay? We shouldn't pray, then sit back and wait for God's timing to occur. There's some action. Usually God has action involved in his, his, his plan for you, okay? Uh, he wants you to pray. He wants you to, uh, uh, um, you know, listen to your pastor, listen to your, uh, your, your deacons, your elders, your brothers and sisters in Christ. But he also wants some action in there, okay? Shouldn't sit back and wait. We should use prayer, consult with mentors, church leaders, and you talk to your family members as well. Proverbs 19, 20 through 21. A little short uh, verses here. Listen to counsel and accept discipline that you may be wise the rest of your days. Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. A lot in those words, guys. Many plans are in a man's heart. Woohoo! right? We make plans, God laughs, right? Because the counsel of the Lord will stand. If we seek out God through prayer, through scripture, through church leaders and mentors, we'll hear his plan. It's up to us to listen. It's up to us to listen. Yes, Proverbs 19, 22 through 21. Thank you very much. Christians and scripture can provide valuable insight into what God wants for our lives. It's all part of God's timing, and it rarely occurs when we expect it. <laughs> Don't we all know that? Sometimes we'll encounter a result that we are not happy with or that comes unexpectedly. These are circumstances. These circumstances may be challenging, but God has a way of teaching us and blessing us in ways that we can't imagine. I don't know why I'm laid up here with a, a bum knee at 53 years old, 26 years into my career at the steel mill. Was a Navy nuke sailor on a submarine years before that. Uh, been married twice before. I don't know why my life has played out the way it has. Choices, decisions, following God's plan, not listening to God's plan. A lot of the latter, a lot of the latter, but I've been blessed the entire way. Beautiful kids. I've got beautiful kids. I've got a granddaughter. Ooh, and guys, I just found out I got a grandson on the way. Got a beautiful mom that's taking care of me while I'm convalescing. She's got a beautiful home here right next to me here on the ridge. Life is good. 
I just got to listen. I just got to listen to where God wants me. Guys, sometimes we'll, we'll encounter a result that we are not happy with. You been there? You been there? I'm going to give you nine reasons, though, why God's timing is perfect. The first one is he doesn't have deadlines. We do. Oh, my goodness. We have so many deadlines. Got to get the video out at this time. Got to get to work at this time. Got to, got to, you know, we have these things you got to do before you retire. We All the kids have to be at school at this time. Uh, so many deadlines. We're confronted with these deadlines daily. God doesn't have them, though. He's not, he's not overly concerned about, about our deadlines either. But he does want the best for us. If we have deadlines, we must follow through on our worldly obligations, knowing that God's timing never occurs in haste. Never. Jeff, good morning, Jeff, messing around. Appreciate to have you in here. Thank you very, very much. Cindy Ellis says, good morning, all. This is the very reason I started following you. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. All right, so we're looking at God's perfect timing, nine reasons. He doesn't have deadlines. And guys, he's never impatient. He's never rushed. His schedule is solely based on caring for his flock. And we're part of that. Most of us are quite the opposite of patient. We live in a fast-paced society, and even the most patient people tend to want quick results. I want this knee fixed now. <laughs> I want I want to be able to walk. I want to be able to run. I want to be able, I want to be able to get on the tractor. I want to be able to get uh, on the barn. I want to get on my building. But all of a sudden, no. <laughs> I got four to six months of rehabilitation. Four to six months of getting this knee back to where I need to be. God's not impatient, though. God's not impatient. Patience is a wonderful thing. It builds character. And guys, it's even more important when we're waiting on God's timing. Lynn says, sometimes we think we're listening, but we ain't. You got that right, sister. You got that right. To become more Christ-like, pray for God's patience. And you'll better understand God's timing. It's really important. When you're praying, think of the traits Jesus has. Okay? Think of his traits. Pray for those. Don't pray for a new tractor. You may need one. And it's okay to pray for a new tractor. But when you're dealing with this situation, pray for Jesus' traits. Okay? And if God gives them to you, woohoo! you'll be blessed and you'll appreciate where you're at. I promise you, you'll appreciate where you're at. All right. The third thing of why God's timing is perfect and amazing is God's timing is honest. It's honest. It's always honest. God is always honest. He never lies. He never deceives. It's truth, 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 truth. Everything occurs in his perfect timing. And there are no games. Nothing's been manipulated. It's truth and honest. And the reason why God's timing is better is based on how he answers our prayers. When we receive guidance on his perfect timing, we get the truth. And the truth will set you free. I promise you. I promise you it will. Good morning, Jamie O'Rourke's Littlefield. Glad to have you in here. Today we're talking about God's perfect timing. Talk about nine things, why it's so amazing. We just went over number three. God's timing is honest. Okay. God, you know, guys. The Bible is God's truth. And we can find all his guidance in scripture. And it never contradicts. And it always is true to our needs. Okay. Outdoors with Vance. Good morning, Vance. Good to have you in here. Guys, four 
God's judgment is never clouded. You know, so many times we're undecided. We're, we're wishy-washy. We, 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 we're, we're walking on unsteady knees. But God's timing is never clouded. Ever, you ever, ever made a major decision without having something else on your mind? You know, oh, man, should I really, really go forward with that? Uh, and you're thinking about, you know, dinner's due or, you know, the kids got to be picked up. We're always, always busy with something else. Our minds are filled with so many things each day. And sometimes it's just tough to make a clear decision without being influenced by the outside world. You know, Gwen Taylor, good morning. Nice to have you in here. Influence can come from our own desires, from our friends, and the and the media, and the world, and society. That's usually when it gets messed up. At times, we won't even realize how we've been influenced until it's too late. And we're suffering the repercussions of diverging from God's timeline. When things happen in God's timing, we know He is never influenced by others or society. His timing is precise, it's clear, and he doesn't have a priority checklist of who to help, or who to answer first. He can answer us all simultaneously. He's got that power. God's timing is right, and his judgment is never clouded. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Fifth thing, guys, he only has you in mind. He has this ability to focus solely and multilateral at the same time. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's uncomprehendable by us how God can focus on you in a world of billions. There are billions of people on this planet and billions before have lived on this earth. And as humans, our circle of acquaintances is limited. We can only know so many people and whether we notice it or not, we prioritize the people around us based on importance to our lives. For most people, it's family, then friends and church, and then your work colleagues, right? It's hard to manage all of our relationships. Sometimes relationships fall to the wayside because we haven't managed our time. We haven't focused our priority. And you only get so much time in a day, right? God wants a relationship with all of us. He, he waits patiently to hear our praise, our confessions, our questions. And even though he knows our hearts, when we come to him, we are treated as the only one. Getting a little emotional here, people. When you come to him, he focuses on you. With you in mind, with you in mind, God's timing is always perfect. You won't be a second line. You're picked first. God's timing has perspective. This is the sixth thing. Perspective. I'm going to need some more coffee this morning. <laughs> Cindy Ellis says, it's so amazing to believe that he knows the number of hairs on each one of our heads, isn't it? Even though mine is falling out, he still knows how many I got. <laughs> it's true. It's true. God's timing has perspective. God has perspective for our lives and for the world. He created the world long ago in his timeline, in his time frame. And guys, it's vast. It's far greater than our short little lives. This doesn't mean that God's timing will come after we are gone. 
But it does mean that he has perspective that we can't understand. Compared to God, we have this narrow little perspective built around our our schools, our places of work, our friends, our places of worship. It's, It's so narrow. We can travel, we can read, we can study scripture, and this will give us a new perspective. Yet it's still nothing compared to the perspective of God. We need to trust God's timing because he has perspective. He knows where we need to be. We only need to listen. We won't have these divergent paths like divorce. God doesn't love like divorce. He understands it. It's in the Old Testament. It's it's in the New Testament. He understands it. Doesn't like it. He doesn't like abortion. He doesn't like parents not talking to their kids. He doesn't like friends turning their backs on each other. Countries going to war. It's it's when we don't listen to God's word and and, and pay attention to where he wants us to go. When When we don't do that, that's when those things happen. That's when you find yourself laid up in a bed with a bum knee because we didn't listen. He didn't do it. He didn't cause your divorce. He didn't cause you to lose your job. God doesn't do it that way. Our choices do that. Some of you will get angry with me. God didn't do this to you. We we did it to ourselves. We didn't listen. God didn't plan for you to get get divorced. He didn't plan for you to have that car wreck. I, I, I I don't believe he did. I don't believe he planned for that baby to die in that car wreck. We live in a fallen world. Adam and Eve. God created this perfect place where everything was perfect. He gave his his people free will, and we screwed it up from the moment of day one. And we're living with the repercussions of it ever since. God loves every single one of us. Sorry, I kicked this camera. It's emotional, guys. This is emotional today for me. God loves every single one of us. He does not want us to get in a wreck. He does not want us to have a divorce. And if we look back on our decision-making Leading up to those events, we can probably find where we were in diverging from God's plan. Yeah, I'm blaming you. I'm blaming me. I'm not blaming God. It's too easy to blame God of why we are where we are. Guys, even God's bad timing is perfect. I heard someone recently comment that uh, an acquaintance said he had horrible timing. Horrible timing. God has horrible timing. And bad timing exists. It causes terrible problems. Again, traffic accidents a missed meeting, getting caught in the rain. God's timing, however, guys, isn't attached to our worldly circumstances or events. Even though we're in the midst of it, and it may seem like bad timing to us, it's always perfect. When God has planned for you to go this path with your life, Wherever we're at, based on our choices at that time, it's going to happen to God's way, okay? So whether you were ready for that change or not, based on what your worldly position was, where you were in life, that's the life you've chosen. That's the path you followed. But when God's plan for you is to take effect, it's going to take effect. (laughs) Whether you're ready or not, it may seem like bad timing.
It's not God making a mistake. That he should have waited a little bit till you were ready. No, no. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. There's always a reason behind his timing. How could God's timing be bad? <laughs> He's perfect. He's perfect. Guys, there's never strings attached with God's timing either. Number eight. There's never strings attached. Vance says, some of us would rather listen to the world. That's when we fall. But as Christians, we can ask forgiveness and he will forgive. But we have to be careful and not keep doing the wrong thing. Amen. Cindy Ella says, our bad timing is God's perfect timing. Amen. Amen. There are no strings attached to God's timing. In our lives, decisions are often made with obligations associated to them. Some are direct. We have contracts. You know, you get to make your car payment. Five years, pay it off. Due on the first of every month. Sometimes you got these indirect or inferred obligations, you know. God's timing, whether in answered prayers, blessings, or challenges, never have strings attached. God will never say, do this for me, and I'll do this for you. His guidance and his answered prayers are a result of his holiness, his goodness, his godness. He doesn't, need, he doesn't need nothing from you. He wants us to pray. He wants us to uh, rejoice and, 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 and sing praises to the heavens, how much you know, we're honored by him. He doesn't need anything from us. He loves his children. He loves to hear us sing songs of praise and worship. But his, his plan for you is not dependent on your singing. On your on your uh, your works, it's not. He's got a plan for you. We're not going to work it to change his plans. We're not going to work it. Even God, even God's blessings, are provided with pure intentions. And as Christians, God expects us to act in accordance with his word. However, there are never strings to attach when he guides us. We need to follow his word, but God doesn't put strings on it. He doesn't. Vance says, we finally had to give some things to God that he'd been going on, and we allowed him to do it in his times. So things worked out. Amazing how that works, isn't it? It's amazing how that works. If you're just joining, guys, we are uh, well into this, over halfway into God's perfect timing. And I said there was nine amazing things, and I'm almost at nine now. We're halfway through. It's just pretty amazing. How the, how, there's a lot of people that do or do not believe in predetermination. Right, that um, every step of your life is planned out, and that's how it's going to be from the moment you're created. So, if we believe that, then he planned our divorce, and he planned uh, our car wreck when our, our he planned our cancer. He he. See, I I don't read that in my Bible. I don't. God doesn't cause cancer. God doesn't cause car wrecks. God doesn't cause divorce. Now, whether he is omniscient and knew we would have that path is up for debate because I know he knows what he wants me to do with my life. He's got that. He's got that planned out. for me. He has good things planned for me. God doesn't pl plan bad things for you. God plans good things for you. 
It's how we get there. And what happens in between is this little life we live here on earth. Now, whether we live it to the fullest, by following his word, seeking him in prayer, living a, an abundant life, or whether we fall over and over again as we reach his determined pan, plan for our life, that's up to us. I truly believe that. I do not believe it is predetermined, pre-chosen by God for us to make bad decisions. That's what free will is. I think he knows. But he gives us this perfect plan. And the closer we get to him, the more we're allowed to follow that plan. When you see some people that seem so close to God, and they've always got a smile on their face, even when the tragedies of the world are around them. When, when a family of six, the dad loses his job, and he huddles the, the family together, and they pray hard, and they move to another state, and they take a new job. And now he's the now he's the you know chairman of the deacons of the church at that place because they really needed him. And and the and the mom starts to uh, um, uh, volunteer at the at the soup kitchen. They're where they need to be. God didn't cause them to lose his job. But he put him where he needed to be. Cindy Ellis, I believe our paths are predetermined by God, but we, through free will, can deviate from that path and then return to his chosen path as we choose. Amen. Amen. Guys, there's no appointment necessary. Number nine, no appointment necessary for God's plan. You ever made an appointment with God? It's actually a great idea for organizing your daily routine. It ensures you spend time with him. He doesn't force you to just spend time with him. Make a daily appointment to hold ourselves accountable and interact with him. God never requires us to make an appointment with him. He's available any time of the day, and he always listens. God's timing is perfect. It's perfect in regards to his availability. Our timing is limited by the numbers of the day, the hours of the day. It's limited. Our timing is limited by school, by work, by our need to sleep. I got three hours last night. God's timing is perfect and no appointment is needed. If you plan your day, let's say you... you you want to go to church every Sunday. You're, you're, you're making a plan for God. Let's say you uh, want to do a morning, take your shower, make your coffee, get into the Bible for 15, 20 minutes, and then start your day. That's your, that's your, that's your routine with God. God loves that. Not required. Not required. But God loves that. If you, if you just randomly get in your prayer closet and pray, and you do it consistently, hey, if you're if, if throughout the day you randomly pray, but you're doing it every day, it's a routine. I do it at noon. I do it at three. I might do it at two. I might not. I might not do it at noon. I might not do it at three. But if you're doing that daily, guys, it's a routine. You're connecting with God. 
And when you're connecting with God, you're more likely to understand his plan for you, that perfect plan that needs no appointment, no appointment ne necessary. Good morning, Jason. Game country, agroforestry. Love you, buddy. Jamie says, you have to be able to you have to be able to read the signs. And his word is kind of like the cipher for reading these signs. The closer you get into the word, the closer you get into prayer, meditation with God, the more likely you are to read the road signs of his plan. It is true. We've, we've read one scripture today, Proverbs, right? There's a lot more scripture about God's timing and how it's perfect. The Bible authors understood God's perfect timing. And that they understood it would give us perspective. It would give us patience. And they these verses assure us, and they give us a calming effect when we're impatient. So if you're impatient... If you're not understanding God's timing, if you know you're not in God's plan, that you're off it, you're diverged from his plan, from his timing, maybe you need to get into the Bible. Maybe it's a good little roadmap. Woohoo! This is where I need to be. This is where I need to be. Jeremiah, if you got your Bible, Jeremiah 29. We're going to be reading 11 through 12. I'm going to read several verses today. I'll give you a heads up. We're going to read Jeremiah, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Micah, ooh, Lamentations, and Psalms again, okay? So let's we'll start off with Jeremiah 29, 11 through 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. <laughs> it's like I made my whole lesson today from that verse, huh? It's pretty much exactly what we're talking about today. For I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for you. He said it in Jeremiah 29. He declared it, declares the Lord. He has plans to prosper you and to not harm you, okay? So he's not going to cause your knee to blow out. He has plans to give you hope and a future. He doesn't want you in despair. He doesn't want you to give up on life. Call on me, he says. Come to me. Pray to me, and I will listen to you, he says. Woo-hoo! Thank you, Auntie Anne. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 12. That is, that is the lesson today in, 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 in two verses. It's amazing. It's amazing. Next, we're going to be in Psalm 27, 14. Psalm 27, 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. We've said, don't sit on your hands and wait for the Lord. What we're saying here is, don't do what you want. Seek what he wants you to do. And we wait for the Lord in prayer and fasting and meditation with his, or surrounded by his people, giving us guidance. We've got to be strong. The world wants to pull you away from his plan, from his timing. But let your heart take courage. And again, wait for the Lord. That was Psalm 27, 14. Auntie Anne, Psalm 27, 14. Thank you. The next one is Ecclesiastes 3.1. I love these verses, guys. When you seek 
When you seek something from God, it was already in his word, written way before we had this need. Ecclesiastes 3.1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. The season I'm in right now is I'm nearing the end of my career. I'm starting over. Building a home from scratch. Uh, kids are grown, starting their lives. I've got you great people here on YouTube. It's kind of like a new life for me. Ridge Life, Ridge Life Ramblings, Ridge Life Lessons, Ridge Life Reviews and How-Tos. It's it's a whole new, whole new, I never, five years ago, six years ago, never thought of it. Never thought of it. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And this is the time I'm in. The time you're in it is completely different than mine. You may have just got married. may have just found out you're having a baby. may just started a new job. God knows. He has a plan to prosper you. The next one is Micah 7.7. And guys, if you're not reading the Old Testament, yeah, you don't know what you're missing. It wasn't just God's word to the Jews put into our New Testament just to give us reference. It really, really has the meat and potatoes of God. We see what God did to his chosen people and how he got us to where Jesus died for us in the New Testament. The Messiah came. What was prophesied in the Old Testament came to fruition in the New Testament. Now we're saved by grace. Mercy is what God has for us. Read your Old Testament too. Shelly B., good morning. Sorry I'm late. No worries, sister. No worries. Talking about God's perfect timing. Now we'll read some Bible verses on it. Good morning, Linda Wall. Love you, sister. Micah 7.7. 7. Micah 7.7. 7. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for God for my salvation. No, wait for God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Let me read that again. Micah 7.7. 7. But as for me, oh, right there, he's already telling you, the world isn't following this. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will look to the Lord for my path. I will look to the Lord for my future. I will look to the Lord for my way out of my bad decisions. I will wait for God, the God of my salvation. I will wait for him. It's My timing says, God, I need this now. God's timing says, no, you're right where you need to be. You've made your bed. Sleep in it. Most importantly, my God will hear me. He may not do exactly what I want him to do, but he will hear me. Micah 7.7. 7. The next one, Lamentations 3.25-26. through 26. Lamentations. Ooh. Lamentations. Y'all often get into the book of Lamentations. I don't. Not one of my not one of my favorite books. It really isn't. Don't want to be sad, but there's so much stuff to learn from from this. 21 people in here. Thank you all so much for joining me on this uh beautiful, hopefully it's beautiful where you are, Sunday morning. Hopefully you've Appointed some time to be with God today, and maybe this is your appointed time, and we're we're in the scripture, which is a good thing. You're with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a good thing. 
Lamentations 3, 25 through 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. If you're living your life waiting for God to guide you, he's good to you. He's good to you for exhibiting your patience. He's good to you for exhibiting your control, your self-control, because the world doesn't move like that. The soul who seeks him is the one that God blesses. And it's a good thing that you should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Next one is Psalm 90, verse 4. Psalm 90, verse 4. Last verse of the day. Psalm 90, verse 4. For a thousand years in your sight are but a yesterday when it has passed or as a watch in the night. This is a hard one now. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it has passed or as a watch in the night. When you live forever, when you've when you've been are and will be as God is our our thousand years our eternity is but as yesterday to God I don't know if you ever been in the military and you stood watch it's a it's a it's a appointed time maybe it's 6 hours sitting at a panel monitoring something, that's your watch, and it's over. That's our lives to God. Yet he takes the time to focus on that moment in our life that we need him. He's dealing with billions of people's moments every day, every hour, every second. So don't get discouraged when you've called out to God and you think God's not listening. You think God's not acting in your life. I hope you don't think he's not capable of it because this is the, this is the, Entity that created all things, perfect in his image, with a plan to prosper, to move forward, to get closer to him by our choice. So whether we want to just wave off our life as insignificant and live it to the fullest, you want to enjoy life. Live every moment to the... How about we get calm? Get quiet. Seek God. And live every moment to the fullest as a Christian for Him. Seeking Him in all things we do. Comparing our actions, our choices to his ways and his love for us. I guarantee you'll find purpose in God's timing. Cindy Ellis says, I'm so thankful that God finds value in me. He loves you, sister. He loves you. God's timing is perfect, guys. It's a 
phrase you often hear in Sunday sermons from your church group leaders. And if you're a Christian, hold on just a second. Sorry. You need something? You're not hearing you lot on your. Yeah, I'm live. <laughs> Sorry about that. God's timing is perfect. There's a reason for everything. I promise you. If you're a Christian, you likely believe that God's timing is always perfect. And with that mindset, with that position, you'll find it. You'll find that peace that warms your insides like a warm cup of coffee made just the way you like it. Not bitter, not too sweet, not too hot, not too cold. God's timing is perfect. We just got to be there at the right time to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, maybe you need to do some of the things we talked about today. Get in God's word. Get in prayer. Get in fasting and meditation. Get, get with God's people. See God. See God's plan. See God's timing because it's perfect. I guarantee it. Auntie Anne laughed. Yeah, thank you very much, Auntie Anne. <laughs> Auntie Anne, God's timing is perfect, but not always Grandma Carol's. <laughs> she, no, no, she's getting ready to go to church. She's, uh, they, they have a, uh, uh, it's the beginning of a uh, revival today at church and uh, she's getting ready. She's uh, taking care of all the dogs, taking care of me, you know, and now she's getting ready. So that's yeah, perfect. It is hundred percent perfect. It, it fit perfectly for our lesson today. Did it not? It fit perfectly. Not always our timing, but God's timing. Uh, thank you all so, so much for joining this morning. It's 5626. You've got time to go uh, watch another lesson, get in your Bible, or head off to church. Okay, so I appreciate you so, so much, <laughs> Auntie Ann. That's awesome. I just thought it was perfect. Yes, it was. It absolutely was. So Auntie Ann, thank you so much, sister, for being here. I appreciate you. Auntie Ann is a moderator on a lot of channels, a lot of channels. And uh, I appreciate her so much for coming in here on Little Old Lessons from the Ridge. And uh, But it's, it's very important, I think. I appreciate her so, so much. Love you back, sister. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Deanne. Thank you. Cindy Ellis, thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming here. Jason, K62, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. I have 18 people still in here. I know there'll be tons uh, of watch Vance. I appreciate you, guy. Uh, Jamie, O'Rourke's Louisville, thanks for coming in uh, this morning. Um, Karen Breast, thank you. Lynn, the Oki. Gwen Taylor, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, just very blessed to have all of y'all in here and uh, participate. Uh, with Linda Wall, thank you, sister. Appreciate you. Perfect timing as usual. Amen, sister. Cindy Ellis says, thank you so much for this lesson, Tim. I really enjoyed it at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be watching New Hope Angora join us live. Absolutely. There you go, guys. You got more things to continue your uh, beautiful Sunday. So, guys, I love every single one of you. It's been a blessing to uh, uh, even have the opportunity to speak God's word on a uh, platform such as YouTube because, you know, the world does not like this. The world does not promote it. The world does not support it. And yet here we are in their, in their platform doing what we need to do. So I appreciate you so much for joining. And until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and to God be the glory. Love you.